exhaust systems, intercoolers, we have a, pip, a plug and play chip on it now, going through and doing some different stuff with the car, getting you guys some results, we ran into some problems with the plug and play chip and the car breaking up a little bit in the upper RPMs, 4th, 5th and 6th gear, so what we're going to be doing is installing a set of HKS, it's the 5000, sorry, 50,003 M40 ILs. I uh, gotta probably keep them gapped around the 24 to 26 thou range. I'll make sure we get some more detailed specifications on that when we're actually doing the install. Tools you're gonna need for the install is gonna be a small assortment of different tools. I like using electric impact. Got some quarter inch drive stuff. Got a quarter inch ratchet, quarter inch extensions, 10 millimeter wrench, ratchet and wrench. Wobbly set, and you won't need a wobbly set a quarter inch, but anything in a uh, quarter inch, 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter, and I believe there's some 7 millimeter stuff that you're going to need to be loosening when you're doing that. Again, I'll be videoing this, looking down on the hood, so you guys can see what we're doing. You're going to need a good set of sockets, spark plug wrench, of course, since we're doing spark plugs. Small screwdriver. Small screwdriver is going to come in real handy when you got to go through and undo the clips for the coils. All right, let's get started, guys. So initially, I'm going to start by just unplugging all the electrical connectors. I am going to try to stay out of the way of the camera so I don't lock it. All right, looks like we're going to have to use our pliers. So to do spark plugs on this, you gotta go through and you gotta pull the intake manifold off. That's why we have to have so many tools. Or a glove. We'll grab another glove. Hang on a sec. So what I'm doing back here is I'm trying to get one of these clamps spin around on the hose, which is not being very forthcoming. So there we go. Got to twist. So, we got all the vacuum lines off, 
I'll pull the throttle body off, got the electrical connectors off. And pull the hose here on the front of the throttle body. Ten when they're down here, I gotta deal with. And hopefully, I'm not getting in the way of you guys' this camera view. So, blow off valve hose. I gotta get this out of the way in order to get to this ten millimeter. this 10 millimeter out of the way for the intercooler hose. And push that 10 uh, intercooler hose back. You get the silicone off of the throttle body. There we go. Now we got that. So pulling out of the way. Got a couple small coolant lines down here underneath the throttle body. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to leave those coolant lines attached when I get the intake manifold off and just roll the intake manifold over so I can get access to the spark plugs. Try and avoid spilling any coolant in this. We're going through and doing the install. We're going to get to these 10 millimeter bolts real quick. I got two 10 millimeter bolts over here that hold. Vacuum line on. Those out of the way. These lines up and out of the way. So you got a 10 millimeter bolt here that goes to the intake manifold. And you got, feels like. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna try to work on the left and right hand side of the engine, so I'm not in your guys' way. Do my best to, anyways, so you guys can see what we're doing. On the end of that little screwdriver, I showed you guys earlier, got a magnet. Bolt that kind of slid down here. Now pay attention to bolts when you're pulling them out. Make sure the bolts have the same length on them. These bolts have a little sleeve, a little plastic sleeve to keep them stuck inside the manifold. Now those bolts are in these two locations. Got one more bolt, we got them bolt up here. Get that out of the way. Now the whole hook, oh, nope, one more bolt right here. Get that electrical harness out of the way. Alright. Back here you got a clip. Get that clip out of the way. There we go. Alright. Got one more bolt down here we gotta get to.
and that should be it for this side. And these bolts appear to have a little retention, little rubby nubbies in there to keep them on. I'm not going to trust them. Okay. Oh, got one more hidden hidden bolt right down here in front. In the key manifold. Okay. All right. So, looks like we've got one, two, three, four bolts out of this side. We got the engine harness somewhat out of the way. Might be a little bit of a bear to get that to clear right through there. So we may have to pull the pull this hose back a little bit. Get the intake manifold to clear. Let's sneak over to the other side. Okay, like I said, we got the throttle body off. There is one big bolt. It's like 14. Yep. Got a great big bolt over here. Goes the intake manifold bracket. Gonna get that popped off. That was a noisy car. Alright, got that out of the way. Make sure you keep note where all the bolts go. Okay, we got that off. Now we gotta get the rest of those 10 millimeters off. We have four or five down the other side. Let's see what we got over here. Got one ten millimeter back here. Alright. Got a ten millimeter here. Oh, hold on. Did not drive a ten millimeter. Alright. Ten millimeter back here. So this one back here is a nut, rear manifold, pull down, appears to be a nut, okay, now one nut up front, make sure you put this back in, you don't have to damage it when you pull it out, I'll try to pull this out, oh. I say try not to damage it, what do I do, I end up tearing it. All right, so there's two nuts, two bolts. I'm not gonna worry about trying to reach down inside there, pull those bolts out, but manifold should lift up and out of the way. So remember, I got those coolant hoses over here, so what I gotta do, I gotta get this manifold to come up high enough. I got one more clipped. Oh, look at that. So what I did is there, I had to pop the vacuum line out of the line clamp. It has a little zip tie line clamp. So, all right, so now we come up. We're gonna try to swing this intake manifold up and out of the way. So we may have one more little bracket over here that's attached. I cannot quite see. Yes, we do. The bracket over here has some electronics on it. There's a bracket right here. So you got to pull two more 10 millimeter bolts. Pulled in a wire harness bracket. I did not see. Again, be careful. Don't lose those.
All right. So got those out of the way. All right, that pulls out of the way pretty easy. That pulls out of the way pretty easy. Okay. All right, let's see. Oh, look at that. Right over and out of the way. Now I'm gonna grab a couple rags, throw some rags in the intake port so we don't need to drop any debris down there. There's no rag debris on those rags. In case you're wondering, it's Friday night. And out front of my shop, we have a main road. And it turns into race car night. So you may hear a lot of cars behind me doing burnouts, racing down the street, etc. etc. Great spot to have a shop though. Okay, clips. So see this little gray clip? It's a locking clip. I'm gonna get that pushed out. So you can unlock the coil. Yeah. So they're kind of a bear. Get in and unlock the clips. Coils over here are pretty well hidden. I'm still gonna be able to get them pulled out. Not too many problems. I may have a slight problem with this connector. I may have to end up disconnect not this harness, sorry. I may have to end up pulling this wire in order to get that coil out. But in order to release the coils, you just push the tab. If you pull the gray clocking clip off, you just push down on the tab above it, and they pop right off. This is going pretty quick. I'm not having too many problems with it. Okay. All the clothes are disconnected. Now we're going to go back, use our 10 millimeter, and go after those coils, and we'll get the spark plugs put in. This is where the wobbly is going to come in handy. Getting inside here to some of these coil bolts, and they're not in the most convenient location. So having a wobbly is going to have, allow you to sneak around some of these inconvenient wires and connectors and stuff like that. Coil number one out, not cylinder one, just coil number one out. Normally I like, like to keep the coils matched up to the cylinders. So when I stack them, I stack them on the cowl in the orientation that I took them out, front to back. That coil was a bit of a bear. Those look good though. They're good, so now we got that those three out. Come on over here, get these three knocked out. So this is where the wobblies in the car. Intake moves, the uh, intercooler pipe moves over far enough. All right, got those out, pull those coils out. All right, let's get in there and get the spark plugs pulled. And I do apologize if I've been in the way. Oh, there was no torque on that. So, speed things up. Since these are the coils I'm not going to be using, I'm going to use the impact, spin them out. Makes it go a whole hell of a lot quicker. Just look at that. Woo! I'm sure you can see that. All sorts of brown. Okay. Cylinder two loosened up. 
Some people like to replace the plugs one at a time. Let's see how tight this one is. Nope, that one's not very tight either. So some people like to do plugs one at a time. Uh, pull one out, replace one. These spark plugs have no torque on them. And I know I keep interrupting the install, but I just want to make sure you guys know and see how easy these spark plugs are popping out. Uh, no torque at all. Okay, back to what I was saying. Uh, some people like to replace one spark plug at a time. Uh, I like to go pull through, pull all the plugs out, and then go through, put new plugs in. You know, everyone has their own way of doing things. I think this just personally goes a little bit faster. Again, I'm using Intact Impact to spin the plugs out real quick. Just makes it go that much quicker. That one's all nice and brown. Not quite far enough. There we go. Nice and brown. So, looks like spark plugs are probably a touch too hot. Some additives in the fuel making them brown. So, I'm hoping that stepping down in these HKS plugs is going to help, you know, to clear up the the breakup misfires that we're having in the upper RPM band. Alright. Yeah, that one's all brown too. Sun's starting to set here, so we might start to lose our light, so I'm gonna have to hurry this up. All brown. So really quick, I'm going to grab the gabber, and we're going to see what these factory plugs are capped at. I got the gabber and so well factory plug gap looks to be bigger than 32 so I'll get the exact gap on these for you guys Okay, factory gap looks to be 35 thousandths. Uh, a bit excessive for a performance car. Uh, I have not looked at the specifications inside of the service manual, so I can't tell you exactly what the service manual recommends, but the HK plug, HKS plugs come gapped, I believe right around 26 to 28 thousandths. I'm gonna check it here really quick. right at 28,000. So, when you're gapping iridium plugs, that's really not in focus, what you gotta make sure you're careful of is you just can't ram the gapper in there. I use a feeler gauge set with different settings. I, right now I got 26 and 28 set up on the feeler gauge. So I go through and I check 26 and I'm very, 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 very careful. When I put that in, I just slide it in, make sure it doesn't break the tip off the iridium. Again, these gap are gapped at about 28,000. 30 thousandths, that's going to close up our gap about 6 thousandths, 5 thousandths over the OEM plugs. Closing up the gap is good because it makes it more difficult for the spark plug to get blown out and cause a breakup or misfire condition. Now as far as torquing these down, these are, the factory plugs obviously weren't torqued down very tight. These plugs have a gasket on them, and they have a gasket seal. So that gasket needs to be compressed when you go through and put the plugs in. So we are going to get plugs started, get that screwed in. 
And I believe spec is 22 foot pounds, 22 to 24 foot pounds. You have to excuse me, I'm not gonna use a torque wrench. I've been doing this longer than I should have. And I got a pretty good feel for what torque the spark plugs are supposed to be at. So you'll feel when you're tightening it down, it'll hit, once that gasket starts to get compressed, you can feel it kind of squish. So 24 foot pounds, give or take. When we were uh, sitting around here not too long ago, everyone asked me, well, how do you know how much torque that is? And, you know, we had a bet in the shop that, you know, I could go through and torque spark plugs down almost dead on to specification. So, went through, tightened them down. And, sure enough, I was, you know, within one or two foot pounds of what they specified. Everyone was surprised I was able to get that close. But again, like I said, when you've been doing it for 30 plus years, you get a feel for things. Now, something I did want to make mention of. HKS is fantastic at having their plugs pre-gap. They have pre-gap protection around the spark plugs. But it's never a bad idea to go through and check the gap. Again, 26, 28 is what I was checking these spark plugs at before. Dead on at 28 with that plug. You guys can't see. So, spark plug. And spark plug. Went through, gap both those out, checked them, they're both at 28. Again, HKS has fantastic quality control when it comes to plug gap. So I'm not too concerned about checking them. But considering the complications or the, the how much work it is to get these uh, spark plugs in, you may want to make sure you go through and gap them. You may want to make sure you go through and tor use a torque wrench. Okay. So we got one bank, almost all the spark plugs in. There's something else I forgot to make mention of is the uh, spark plug tool itself. Uh, due to the complexity of these, the location where the spark plugs are, like I said, we talked about there's some wires and connectors and hoses and stuff like that that are in the way. Uh, the plug tool that I'm using has a uh, swivel on the head of the plug, so you can see here, so I just swivel it around. The only downfall to having a swivel on the end of your spark plug tool is that you will run into uh, the potential for cracking the spark plug when you're doing the install due to the swivel and the, the connector, or the socket, I should say, not being pushed all the way down on the spark plug. And I'll show you a quick example of what I'm talking about there. So you get a spark plug, you get inside the hole, you see how it seats all the way down like that? Let me show you that again. Okay. There's there, and there, that's seated all the way down. You can be twisting this in at an angle. What happens if you don't get that seated all the way down? You get it seated like there. When you get in there and you start tightening it down, inside of here makes contact with the porcelain. And when you're torquing on it at an angle, trying to tighten that down when it's kicked off to the side like that, you'll end up breaking that porcelain. So make sure if you're going to use a wobbly like this, you got that spaced all the way down, sitting all the way down on that spark plug. That way you don't have to worry about it. Now this is a good magnetic, good magnetic insert. I don't use the, the little rubber grabber that they use for other spark plug sockets. The magnetic ones seem to work better for me. So hopefully you guys watch this video and you appreciate what we're doing. You enjoy the technical stuff. If you don't enjoy the technical stuff, please tell me. Say, hey, shut your mouth. Quit talking and just install the damn spark plugs. 
because I need to know what you guys want to see. Now, I'm not getting a whole bunch of feedback. The little bit of feedback I am getting on, on YouTube, I'm trying to make sure that uh, we adjust where people want us to adjust. Making sure that we're getting those uh, camera angles, getting, you know, getting the track results, getting the dyno results, stuff like that. So, pipe up, say something. Tell me what you guys want to see. Almost finished, we got one more plug to install. And in case anyone's wondering, yes, we are gonna put this on the dyno. This will be part of the results tonight. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get the camera mounted so you guys can see what's happening, or I might just sit inside the car and hold the camera and show you guys the dyno results when we're done running the car on the dyno. So, last spark plug, then we get to go through, pull everything out of the way, set the intake manifold back down. Make sure you don't have any debris anywhere, make sure none of the bolts fell out. Okay, now comes the difficult part. So, get that intake manifold back down on there. Got a stud here, stud here, those alignment studs for the front and rear. What's gonna happen? This intake manifold is going to get want to get in the way of all this wiring and connectors and stuff like that. So you're going to have to make sure you try to push as much of this out of the way and you bring that intake manifold back over here. Oh, I think I got it. Close over here if I get set up. All right, that connector out of the way. This out of the way. Where are we at? We're close. Okay. Who's in the way? What's going on here? Oh. Voila. All right. Oh. Don't do this. Yeah. Uh. We do need the coils installed before we put the intake manifold back on. So, we can have some fun while we're doing this. Okay, front rear. Three coil bolts. See, 30 years. 30 years of working on cars. And what do I do? Gotta put the intake manifold back on. Gonna put the intake manifold back on without putting the clothes on. I'll just I'll just call that, that me. That mistake was made because I'm camera shy. How's that sound? I used to being on camera, not used to video and stuff like this, but trying to get those YouTube subscriber counts up. Get you guys liking this stuff. So, the more I get done on the Kia Singer, the more you guys are going to share it, right? 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 Okay. And if you're wondering what that was torqued to, it was torqued to good and tight. Not too tight, not too loose, but good and tight. There we go. Got those coils in. Let's move over to the other side. Now these coils are a bit of a bear. There's some more stuff in the way over here, so gotta kind of manhandle these in a little bit. Hopefully the lighting is still good. It's starting to get dark here. Take a quick peek, see how dark it is. Nah, it's not bad. Okay. It 
So I'm gonna say this. If you've made it this far into the video, we're 33 minutes into the video. God bless you <laughs> for sticking with and watching this whole video. Or if you, even if you fast forward and you can hear that, give me a thumbs up. Or thumbs down, it really doesn't matter. You guys tell me what you do and don't like. It's just a horrible spot. Got a fuel line in the way, got two lines in the way. Let's we'll start that with the impact. Plug that. There we go. Be careful impacting on foils too much. You are on an electronic device. I'm banging on them a whole bunch with the impact. Could have some dire consequences. All right, let's get these snapped on. Remember, you snap the gray clips back down. I'm just I'm reconnecting this connector because I had to undo that in order to get access to that uh, coil bolt. Gray clip down. Don't break, guys. Here's the thing. Don't get frustrated. I want to make mention of this because you would not believe how often I see broken clips on different cars where people can't figure out the clip and they just rip it off. Please don't do that. Please, please, please. Do not snap it on, snap the lock down. When you go to take it off, pry the lock off, unclip it. Yanking those off, especially since they're underneath the intake manifold, that thing breaks and rattles itself loose at a later date, you're just gonna end up with a misfire and a check engine light. Please, please, please make sure you focus on not breaking those clips. Okay. Back to the intake install. I'm going to try to get this thing flipped up over. Got to get some of that stuff out of the way. A bunch of electrical goodies and connectors and brackets over here. We got to get pried up out of the way. Once all these are out of the way, we'll be able to slide the manifold over, down, and on. All right. So let's grab some intake manifold bolts. So we got one back here. Grab pliers so I can grab these and push them down in there. Can't get my fingers down there, so I gotta use a pair of pliers. Got the two nuts up front. Get those. Oh, one nut up front, one nut in the back. So make sure you didn't set anything down, didn't get any wires trapped or anything like that. Everything looks good. Over here, remember we pulled that big bolt out of the side of the intake manifold. Big bolt. I want to put this one in. Don't tighten. Just put it in, get it started. Because you want the manifold to move around a little bit. Because if you tighten that one down, when you go to tighten down the manifold bolts, it could flex it and break that long neck that runs over to the throttle body. You do not want to break that. Normally when you tighten things down, you want to start from the inside, work your way out. So, you go right here. Again, make sure you got nothing. Pinching that down. These are reasonably small bolts. If you're going to go through, torque them down. Probably torque them down to 15 foot pounds, you know, 12 to 15 foot pounds, getting them torqued down. 
come inside of here. You let these ones in. flashlight look this over make sure nothing got pinched all right everything looks good fantastic okay set this so we got a hose oh there we go that hose out runs down underneath all right now I'm going to go through, hook up a couple hoses. Ah, oh, another good thing to remember. Don't forget to slip them clips on. Those hose clamp. I'm going to rotate this one around a little bit so I can get better access to it from up top. So, a lot of plastic on this manifold. Don't force anything. You can't get a hose on or you can't get a clip on. Don't come in here and just, you know, reef on stuff. Trying to get stuff to tighten up or slip over. Be very, very careful. Last thing you want to do is break a... I haven't checked the price on these yet, but I believe these manifolds are fairly expensive. I don't want to go through and break a, you know, six or $700 intake manifold. Okay. Got this 14 millimeter back over here on the side that we're going to do it. That's the lower intake manifold, the uh, support bracket bolt. Again, we, we saved that one for last because we had to tighten down the intake manifold first. Okay. All right. Let's get the throttle body on. Soak under the throttle body. I forgot to show you guys this hose or this this tool earlier. This tool. So as you go through and slip the throttle bot, the hose over the throttle bot, it's a little hook tool. You just slip it in, wrap, push it around, and it slides that hose on. Lickety split, super easy. Alright. Got a connector up here for the throttle body. Got a connector up here for the boost sensor. Alright. Seven millimeter bolt. Sorry, seven millimeter nut on this clamp. Okay, we're pretty much done over here. Let's head over to the other side. this foam piece back in. Huh? Ripped another piece off. Good lord. Okay, so there are some there's a couple of bolts down in here that are going to be a bear to get in because of how they're in there so take a magnetic and on a 
little mini screwdriver and kind of get those started. Come on. Who's excited to see the down results? I know I am. Spark plugs almost never increase horsepower. So if we see any gains in horsepower, that'll be a benefit for sure. So right here, where my finger is, there's a clip. Got to pick this electrical harness up, snap it back over that. We snapped that off earlier, or unclipped it earlier. Flip these two back around. So we got one 10 millimeter, two 10 millimeter, three 10 millimeter, four 10 millimeter bolts. Now who remembers what bolts go where? Huh? So let's see if I can remember. So, I believe This was black. One, two, three, four. This went here. This went here. You guys can go back to the video and see if I'm right on those locations. This is my first time having the manifold off this car. So, we have one little thing on it that goes back here. Oof, I have to use that magnet trick. To engage a couple threads. Okay. Pull the magnet out. All right. Ooh. Okay, there we go. All right. There we go. Okie dokie. Well, I think we've just about got this thing all buttoned up and finished. Uh, I've got to throw one more bolt back here in front where the intercooler goes. we got one more hose here we got to hook up right here. Let's get that hooked up first. Again, I'm pushing these hoses on. You're dealing with a plastic manifold. Do not, and I repeat, do not force any of these connectors on. Break one of them little tiny bolts, you're going to be upset. Got to put this one last bolt here in the front where the intercooler is. And with that being said, outside of me being a goof, tearing that foam rubber a little bit, we got all the plugs installed. Got all the connectors plugged in. Got all the vacuum lines hooked up. I'm gonna do a once over real quick. 
to make sure we got to get this blow off valve hose back on. So if you go to a shop and you want to get your spark plugs changed and you see that we did this in 50 minutes, okay? Do not expect the shop to charge you an hour to do a spark plug change. Just because I can do it in 50 minutes doesn't mean that everyone can do it in 50 minutes. I'm probably gonna cut this video down a little bit. I gotta get some stuff out shorten this down so you guys can hopefully see this in about a 30 minute time window and start to stop going through making sure everything's hooked up don't have any hoses pulled off anywhere connectors all right let's give this thing a fire to the HKS plugs. Told you the part number in the beginning of the video. Let's go through, get it loaded up on the dyno. I'll get some video shot of it on the dyno.